This video explains how your baby's hearing was assessed by the audiologist using an ABR test. ABR stands for Auditory Brainstem Response. To better understand the ABR, let's first review the pathway sound takes through the ear. To make a sound, something causes air particles to vibrate. Clapping, using your vocal cords, shaking a box of rice, for example, all make sound by vibrating the air around the source, which spreads out from that source in waves. Sound is actually air particles vibrating each other. In waves, they travel up to the ear, into the ear canal, and up to the eardrum. That is stage one, the outer ear. In stage two, the eardrum is caused to vibrate in the same way as the air particles vibrating beside it. The middle ear space, shown here in purple, is an air-filled chamber that has an opening that leads out to the back of the throat. Having air on both sides of the eardrum helps it to move freely. The eardrum vibrates three little bones which sit in the middle ear space. Stage two is called the middle ear. The three little bones connect to a small sealed window. On the other side of this window, inside the snail-shaped cochlea, is fluid. The three bones vibrate against the window in the cochlea to match the vibration of the eardrum. This causes the fluid inside the cochlea to vibrate as well. The cochlea is lined with more than 3,000 tiny hair cells, called inner hair cells. Certain hairs will bend to match the vibration, some hairs for high sounds, some for mid sounds, and some for low bass sounds. Kind of like keys on a piano. When these hairs bend, they release a little spark of energy. The signal is strengthened and made more clear by other special hairs called outer hair cells. There are actually more of these hair cells, more than 20,000, and their only job is to help the inner hair cells. These outer hair cells help to send a stronger, clearer signal. This brings us to the final step before the brain receives information and hearing happens. The energy released by the bent hair cells is passed up the auditory nerve, which is like a cable to the brain. This last stage, including both the cochlea and the auditory nerve, is called the inner ear. Sound has been processed and sent up to the brain, and we can hear sound and think about it. This is the hearing pathway. Young babies are new to listening, and so they are not very good at showing us if they heard a sound. This is especially true for quiet sounds. We need to know at what level the baby can just begin to hear quiet sounds. That will tell us if the baby can hear speech comfortably. The ABR is the best test for young babies because we don't need baby to show us a response. The ear will respond, and we can watch for that response with the ABR. The challenge is that the baby needs to be sleeping for us to best see how the ear responds to the quiet sounds. So, why is it, for this test, better that a baby is sleeping? When the baby is awake, the muscles of the face and scalp are very active. This is why it's better that the baby is sleeping. While the nerves of the face and scalp are quiet, it's easier to see the ear's response to the tone that the audiologist plays through the earphones. To set up the ABR test, it looks a little confusing, but it's actually just two earphones. One place in each of the baby's ears. There are also three or four sensors connected to a computer that are like soft little stickers placed on the sleeping baby, typically with one on the forehead, one on the temple, and one behind each ear. For the test, a tone is played, and if the tone travels through the hearing pathway, all the way up to the auditory nerve, the ear's response will be shown on the audiologist's computer. We want to know the quietest sound that a baby can hear. Loudness is measured in decibels. Babies usually can just begin to hear quiet sounds that are from 0 decibels to 15 decibels. A quiet sound you just might hear is leaves rustling. A lawnmower might be 100 decibels loud when you're near it. So, a tone is played 
and then played louder until the computer shows that the tone has traveled through the hearing pathway to the auditory nerve. The audiologist will work quickly while a baby is asleep to try to collect information about how well a baby can hear for four different tones important for hearing speech. This gives a picture of how well a baby hears those important frequencies. It may take more than one appointment to get all the information for both ears. The point at which the baby just begins to hear at each frequency is called the threshold of hearing. When the scores from the ABR testing are over 25 decibels, it means there is a hearing loss. There are two important ways to describe a hearing loss, the degree of hearing loss and the type of hearing loss. Let's look at degree first. The first three thresholds are thought to be the most important for hearing speech and language. For degree, these three frequencies are added and then divided to get an average. This average tells you the degree of hearing loss. By knowing degree, we can get a sense of the impact of the hearing loss. A hearing loss might be slight, mild, moderate, moderately severe, severe, or profound and there might be a different degree of hearing loss for each ear. Each degree of hearing loss will be different in how it impacts hearing speech and language. The second way to describe hearing loss is type. Type of hearing loss tells you where in the hearing pathway sound is not getting through. Remember, there are three parts of the path, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. At each of these stages, there might be something that is preventing the sound from being passed along the chain. There are many tools that can be used along with the ABR to help find where in the pathway the problem lies. The audiologist, for example, can do the ABR test in a different way that will check the inner ear alone. This ABR test is called bone conduction ABR. Instead of sending sound through the whole system, the audiologist can place a vibrator gently behind the child's ear. The outer and the middle ear won't be used. The bone conductor will vibrate the fluid inside the cochlea. Different vibrations can check different frequencies. This time, when the audiologist sees the ear's response to vibrations, they can assess just how well this part of the chain, the inner ear, is working. The audiologist's use of this tool and others will help them to define type of hearing loss. When talking about type, an important line exists between the middle ear and the inner ear. One type means there's a problem area for transmitting sound to the right of this dotted line. A second type means there's a problem area on the left, and the third type involves problems transmitting sound on both sides of this dotted line. When the problem transmitting sound is to the right of this dotted line, in the outer ear, or the middle ear, or in both, the audiologist will call this a conductive hearing loss. When the problem transmitting sound is in the inner ear, the hearing loss is called a sensory neural hearing loss. If the problem transmitting sound is on both sides of this dotted line, that is, in the inner ear and the middle ear, the inner ear and the outer ear, or problems transmitting sound in all three stages, the hearing loss is called a mixed hearing loss. Type of hearing loss clarifies where to focus and how to help. With today's technology, most types and degrees of hearing loss can be helped. By discovering the degree of hearing loss, and by identifying where in the pathway there is a problem transmitting sound, the audiologist can then help you to determine what procedures, technology, or strategies can help best. Knowing about hearing loss early can be very difficult for some parents, but it's much easier for the baby than if it was noticed later. Knowing early is important for stimulating language early, which is what is needed for strong language growth to happen for both children who learn sign language 
and for those who learn to listen and speak. For the parent who wants their child to develop spoken language, knowing early, and then acting early, through all-day use of hearing technology and all-day talking with their baby, is recommended. With these two steps, there is great potential for a baby to develop strong speech, language, and listening skills.